Okay, so here's 111 grams of sodium bromide. Go over, and here's about uh, like 95 plus 20 milliliters of water, whatever amount that is. So we'll just do that. Rinse. Now, the dissolution of sodium bromide is endothermic, it gets cold as it dissolves. So here's um, 74 milliliters of 82% sulfuric acid because that's what I have. You can just do, you can just kind of pour it in like that. Yes, it will, it will make a little bromine, but it's not much. It really does not matter. But yeah, the formation of bromine by oxidizing it with aqueous sulfuric acid is not very favorable. It does happen, but it's not very favorable. So you can see, it really is not doing that much. You know, it is not the best color, but it really is not going to matter in the grand scheme of things. And yes, there is a slight smell of bromine, for sure. Uh, the heat will uh, help this dissolve in. And then I'll show you a very simple trick to discharge the bromine now, out. Now the magic ingredient is sodium bisulfite. It's a reducing agent. Here I only got about 0.2 grams. I will add this in, you'll see it reacts, it forms sulfur dioxide, and if I mix it, it does not look too obvious, and uh, that's fine, but pretty much most of the bromine, if not all of it, has been reduced now. The coloration left behind is just impurity in my acid, most likely, and you can also see sodium bisulfate crystallizing out uh, from this as it cools down, it's only mildly warm, so I'll go ahead and rapidly distill this. Here we got it distilling, and you might be going, Edward, why are you heating over a Bunsen burner? Well, one, that's a, that's a Fisher Accuflame burner, uh, which is a kind of Mecker burner. And two, um, because you don't need temperature control for this, you want speed. It is fast. Boiling water takes a lot of energy, so we will do it with flame. And you will see right here, temperature is spot on. That's the, that's the hydrochloric acid azeotrope. It's a little over 5, uh, 125 Celsius, but that's fine. Um, and in fact, you can actually see bits of HBr off-gassing originally uh, out through the column. Um, <clears throat> now, why do we have the column here? Uh, because I feel like it. And also, uh, boiling this very vigorously will throw off mist of solution. We don't want sodium bromide or sodium bisulfate making it over. So this column um, kind of filters any aerosolized stuff. And you can see we're getting our acid over really rapidly. And it's clear. There's no bromine in this. It will have a slight trace of sulfur dioxide from the bisulfite. But that's fine. It's not going to interfere with most things you use HPR for. And um, yeah, you don't need to mess around with sulfur, phosphorus, or copper to remove the bromine. You just reduce it. Uh, the sulfite reduces bromine back to sulfuric acid and HBr, so we're not losing any yield either. It's just a very, very slight contamination. If you really feel like it, you can titrate it, but you can see, color over here is not making over here. So whatever color's in there is not bromine. And um, there you go. That's a very quick way to make azeotropic um, hydrobromic acid, none of the fuckery you see usually on YouTube where you gotta put it in an ice bath and add a large excess of water, add the acid slowly. You don't have to do any of that. You just throw it all together and boil the hell out of it and it works. Um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and show you the density of this to prove to you it is azeotropic. Uh, in fact, it will actually be slightly over azeotropic usually. And um, yeah, you'll see, you know, we're getting this viscous mixture heat it a bit more to try and get everything over so my ass is going to be slightly more dilute but oh well and you can see whatever color oh my god whatever stupid coloration is in there is completely not bromine it was probably something like iron um this condenser should be rearranged out of the way because this does not cool liquid very well or cools vapor very well so the acid coming over is a bit warm and it causes it to do that sometimes but You'll see and if you're wondering how the hell is this not cracking being heated like that the cracking of glassware from heat is thermal gradient so if it's already hot you can crank it to a higher temperature it's going to be fine as long as you don't exceed 100 celsius of a difference um which it's not in this case so yeah but that will basically get that until it no longer distills anything over it'll kind of melt and collapse 
and then uh, that's completely done. And uh, that, that means I will have a bit more extra water, but oh well. You can see the sodium on the glass, so I think it's close to being done. Uh, the temperature up here is... Mm, it went to 130 during the distillation, but it's dropped back down, so... Uh, I would say this is nearly done then. Yeah, you can see some white fuming, so that, that's traces of sulfuric acid making it over. Uh, we have a slight excess of acid, so we stop heating and uh, we wait for that to stop dripping. Okay, stupid monkey brain, uh, I forgot to account for the water in my sulfuric acid, so this acid is more like 40 something percent. Um, I mean, the temperature's not quite at 20C either, it's like it's warm still. So, density measurement's not too accurate. Um, Azeotropic 48% is 1.4 something, um, and 33% at 20 Celsius is 3, um, 1.33. So, not quite all the way there, but this suffices for uses. I could go and refractionate, but yeah. Um, Adjust for the amount of water in your acid. If, if you're using 98%, it's negligible. If you're using diluted acid like I am, because my drain cleaner is not always the same concentration, um, adjust for that. And uh, you can omit the water of hydration for the sodium bisulfate, because it, it's going to dehydrate at the temperatures we're distilling it. But anyways, left in there is sodium bisulfate. It will solidify. Do not add water to this while it's hot. It will explode. Um, so wait for it to solidify. Wait for it until it's below 100 celsius then you add water to it do not shake it do not do that just swirl it put it in a hot water bath let it heat up it'll slowly all dissolve out do not shake it when there's salt in there it will break your glassware um but anyways there you go there's how to make hydrobromic acid without the stupid ice bath without adding a ludicrous amount of water and it's completely bromine free it's called it's called basic redox you add a reducing agent to it voila um, but yeah.